When we try to retain too much information, there is a potential risk that the performance of the standard transformer model could significantly decline. So, what exactly should we prioritize in remembering? Hello everyone, it's great to see you all. This is Andal Engineering Error Speak. Google has just introduced a new model, which can be seen as version 2.0 of the transformer. Despite being configured on a very small scale, this model has demonstrated remarkable performance in specific benchmarks. Even while processing inputs equivalent to dozens of books, it has managed to outperform GPT-4. The model achieved impressive benchmark results. This led to speculation that it could be the next evolution of the transformer. It raises questions about whether NVIDIA GPUs or Big Tech's AI chips will be more advantageous. On December 31st, Google Research unveiled a model named Titan. This model is based on the concept that attention is all you... Titan, the advanced successor to the transformer model, is designed to emulate human memory processing. By imitating how our brains store memories, it overcomes the limitations of previous transformers and incorporates long-term memory functionality. An intriguing aspect is the clear differentiation between short-term and long-term memory, which is further explored. It integrates both short-term and long-term memory aspects, and they've added a new metric known as the surprise metric. Similar to how we remember extraordinary events that stand out from our daily lives, this model learns by identifying unexpected occurrences. Let's delve into this concept further. When we consider AI models, whether it's on-device AI or server AI, don't you think this could also impact NVIDIA GPUs and AI chips? Let's delve into these aspects in more detail. Before we dive into the specifics of Transformer 2.0, it's crucial to understand the issues present in the existing model and why some experts argue that it won't lead us towards achieving AGI. The first significant issue to consider is related to memory, specifically the limitations of our memory capacity. In the Transformer model, the fundamental process involves predicting which word will come next in the sequence, based on the sequence of words that have already appeared. Therefore, each time we produce a new output, we need to completely clear the memory, run the process once, and then perform the calculations again to obtain another result. Now, let us imagine a scenario where we are required to generate an extremely lengthy sequence of words, and in such a case, the length from the starting point to the end point must continuously expand, wouldn't it? For those in the know, the essence of the transformer model lies in its vector and matrix operations. As these operations scale up, the computing resources, such as GPUs and AI chips, need to scale up accordingly. It's not merely about increasing resources. It's about expanding the capacity for parallel processing. This is commonly known as the context window. The traditional transformer architecture is constrained by a specific context window, which means that if any input data exceeds this window, it will only generate the next segment based on the information within that limited period, effectively forgetting any prior information that was provided before. As a result, the longer the data, the more drastically the memory usage increases, and it struggles with long-term memory. Consequently, it is quite limited in recalling and leveraging very old information. Ultimately, the transformer is about these words, or tokens as they are called. To break it down, the attention mechanism works by linking the relevance of individual tokens, converting these relationships into numerical values, and then selecting the most fitting ones. This can be better understood through the concept of the context window, which refers to the maximum number of tokens that can be processed in a single operation. The number of those is called the context window. It means the amount processed at once. Imagine a series of words lined up. As the number of words increases, they need to be processed simultaneously to infer meaning within that context. However, the context window is not limitless, but constrained. Once the length surpasses a certain threshold, the model inevitably forgets the remaining information, which is an inherent and fundamental limitation. When too much information floods in, we tend to remember only what sticks and forget the rest, right? So, when Gemina 1.5 was launched, the big deal was that it could process up to 2 million tokens at once. Previously, models like GPT-4 could only manage about 128,000 tokens. Gemina drastically increased this limit, which is fantastic. However, if you go beyond this, it starts to lose track of the earlier information. So, when we use something like ChatGPT for fun and input dozens of entries, it cannot remember the previous ones. It would be great if it could remember my entire history, but the structure of existing transformer models makes that impossible. That is one of their limitations. So, what else is there? Let's say this transformer architecture can keep extending content length. In reality, it can. We can keep increasing it, but why can't they? It's all about hardware resources. The context window, as mentioned earlier, is the number of words that can be processed at once. To handle this, you need to have GPUs or AIMPU chips installed. So, for the transformer to improve its performance and handle an extremely long context, it fundamentally requires, depending on the context length, time or memory complexity increases significantly. One GPU is no longer enough. Even Elon Musk uses tens of thousands of GPUs. Moreover, the time required for processing increases and the complexity of retrieving and integrating memory poses significant challenges. 
limiting its applicability in complex real-world tasks. Ultimately, we aim to develop AGI. It's possible to implement a very long context window with hardware. When hardware components interact, latency issues can emerge, causing potential performance bottlenecks. This new model addresses some of these challenges, highlighting the necessity for an alternative approach. Therefore, Titan introduces a dedicated memory space to address the issue of data loss that transformers experience over time. The reason I mentioned the von Neumann architecture is that it exemplifies how our typical computers function. In these computers, we have components that correspond to the CPU or processor, as well as memory components like DRAM. It would be great if we could do that, but the register capacity is too expensive and limited. Similarly, SRAM is fast. We store data in RAM for quick access or in SSDS and hard drives for long-term storage. Data that needs to be retained even when the power is off is stored in SSDS or hard drives. Large amounts of data needing rapid processing are handled by memory. For tasks requiring immediate access, we process them within the CPU. The earlier transformer model can be likened to relying solely on the CPU. So, let's assume there was a certain context window within which it tried to process everything. As you expand this window, the complexity for the GPU increases significantly, making it exceedingly difficult to manage. The new model, Titan, addresses this by incorporating a separate memory space capable of storing information for extended periods. This is the fundamental concept. However, this memory isn't just extracted from an outside source. It is known as neural memory. It creates an independent space for long-term memory, capable of remembering significant information beyond the context window. As a neural network, it retains and continuously updates necessary information. While it is typical to forget after 30 years, Titan's key concept is to independently organize elements that are worth remembering. When we commonly talk about AI models, we refer to weights. The number of parameters in GPT 3.5 is 175 billion, and in some other models, it can go up to an impressive 200 billion. These weights are essentially numbers that are determined after continuous data training sessions. So these weights become fixed, and for example, in the case of the transformer model, these weights remain constant. The model's 200 billion weights are fixed at specific values and do not change. Instead of directly storing past states, it only retains memory within the input context window while processing the data. When these 200 billion weights are used as inputs, the outputs are generated based on these predetermined parameters, without any additional memory storage. However, in the case of Titan, it has a special feature called neural memory. This neural memory is essentially a neural network, so it has both short-term and long-term memory. By combining these, they have created an architecture that allows them to operate together. So, with Titan, you hear about things like 200 billion or trillions of parameters, right? Transformer. In models like this, having a dedicated long-term memory allows for a clear separation of tasks. Typically, when we develop an AI model, we use it for training purposes, and later, we utilize it for inference. During this entire process, we also conduct various tests. Instead of reusing the same training data, which would yield predictable results, we input vectors as part of the trial to observe the outcomes. When you test these models, you can check if they perform correctly. They can also retain memory during testing. So even during tests, it can still learn new information, meaning it can remember not just what it learns during training, but also the information from the tests. This is quite an innovative aspect. I find it very meaningful that it mimics human memory. When reminiscing about past memories, whether it's an old girlfriend, an old boyfriend, or a paper you read long ago, we tend to remember only the core images or events, while the details are often hard to recall. This process of abstracting important events, similar to how humans remember, is quite simple and intuitive, mimicking the way our memory works. The idea is to store long-term memory within the memory module. Just as humans benefit from forgetting certain things, forgetting can be crucial. Since we are creatures who forget, it helps us move on from sad memories. However, if the memory module is overloaded with too much information, it might strain the system, potentially decreasing the performance of the standard transformer model. So, when we ask the question of what exactly should be remembered, the answer lies in something I mentioned during the introduction, which is the surprise metric. Surprise? It's astonishing, isn't it? When you have some data and an expected outcome, if the difference between what you anticipated and what actually happens is significant, it means it's not what you thought. This then gets stored in long-term memory. This is similar to how we remember unexpected events, like when COVID-19 suddenly led to lockdowns. Out of the blue, when the stock market crashes, it hits hard, doesn't it? Just as exceptionally positive or negative events that are not part of our daily routine tend to leave a lasting mark, the neural network assesses the current input against its predicted output, measures the discrepancy, and if the gap is substantial, it stores this information in long-term memory. If it differs significantly from memory, it recognizes it as new data and stores it in neural memory for long-term retention. In the same way, the forgetting mechanism helps in continuously removing data that needs to be analyzed while keeping essential information, 
gradually working in an adaptive manner to improve memory efficiency. Consequently, Titan's architecture is fundamentally divided into three main components, the first of which is the core, akin to a standard transformer. When data is input, it performs attention operations. That's the core function. Then, long-term memory holds the long-term information. In the case of long-term memory, it is based on neural networks known as neural memory, which is built in a similar way to AI. This neural memory stores past data and retrieves it whenever needed, making it quite efficient. Additionally, there is something called persistent memory, which retains information permanently, allowing for long-term storage and retrieval. This means that without the need for additional learning, pre-stored knowledge is kept and used as needed. There's no need to learn it specifically. We can just remember it as it is. By combining all of this and using the attention mechanism at the core, it allows for performing tasks without memory limitations. This architecture is what makes it possible. In fact, Titan proposes three different structures. There are three approaches to utilizing this structure, and the one currently displayed involves using context. Firstly, the method known as memory context, as illustrated in the diagram, involves storing past data and retrieving it whenever necessary to perform attention mechanisms. This effectively addresses the limitations of traditional transformers. Secondly, there's memory gating, where the gate assesses the significance of past memories when combined with new data. It is a mechanism that determines the significance when new data is combined with past memories. It is configured with gates that can determine whether something is important or not, allowing for selective processing. The third method is called memory as layer. Those familiar with AI models will recognize that layers refer to different levels within a neural network. The intention here is to embed long-term memory into the transformer by integrating an additional layer into its architecture. This technique effectively combines memory with the existing framework, and by doing so, due to its straightforward design, there might be limitations in performance. There are various approaches, but in essence, whether we are talking about neural memory or long-term memory, it involves discussing different implementation methods and how the architecture is restructured. Displayed here are several graphs, and the one currently shown is a benchmark known as Baby Long. When you input an extremely long document, does it handle it well? Imagine feeding it a lengthy and intricate text and then asking, hey, can you recall this? Do you remember this detail? This kind of testing is commonly known as reasoning in a haystack, which is based on a benchmark designed to infer within a haystack. As you can see horizontally, the length is gradually increasing, currently growing tenfold. Thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions. The higher the accuracy, the better. So, which one stands out? Titan is the top performer. Compared to what? When compared to Elama 3.18 billion, GPT-4, and even the GPT-4 Mini, this one stands out as superior. As sequences become longer and more extended, short-term memories start to form, which indicates that we can manage even more intricate and prolonged sequences efficiently. They compared both few-shot learning and fine-tuning, and Titan performed better in both cases. So, not only in tasks like reasoning in the haystack problem, but also in finding the needle, Titan was overwhelmingly good. It is said that its problem-solving ability in general knowledge has improved, although solving difficult problems is still quite challenging. They reported improvements in general knowledge issues, but the parameters used were only 170 million, 360 million, and 760 million. These are quite small. Now, we're talking about hundreds of billions or even trillions. It shows improvements in very small ranges. This is called perplexity, meaning a reduction in confusion. It indicates lower perplexity compared to the existing transformer. This means more accurate predictions are possible. Despite being on a much smaller scale, it can handle very large contexts. It shows the potential for high performance. This makes people curious. How is this possible? Can it really perform that well? Is it the next transformer? Is it transformer 2.0? These questions arise. With these memory modules, you can use parallel algorithms for training. This applies to language models and tasks like stock price prediction. There's a lot of information over time. In terms of tokens, there's a significant amount of information. Or analyzing human genome sequence, for example. Short context windows couldn't be applied in large-scale tasks. But now, they can be applied here. Isn't that great? In specific fields where the management of long-term memory and the simultaneous processing of large data sets are absolutely essential, this development could indeed be revolutionary particularly for models like transformers. Extending the context window invariably leads to a significant increase in memory usage. When traditional transformers attempt to process extensive data, they encounter significant challenges due to the high memory and communication demands. Titan, however, is designed to manage these resources more effectively, indicating it could function with much lower resource requirements. Although Titan isn't a flawless model yet and requires extensive testing, it has a unique ability to update its memory during tests, Unlike previous models that relied on fixed parameters post-training, this means it can learn and adapt like a human. Furthermore, Titan delivers impressive performance using fewer resources, which is a significant advantage. However, it does come with its own set of limitations.
Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, the benchmark results in the Bobby Log test were quite impressive. Despite outperforming GPT-4 in some cases, it's important to note that while it excels in certain areas, it may still underperform in others. So we need more research to see if it can fully replace the previous model. Secondly, while the existing models use fixed parameters, we know this, right? Take leg perplexity or even EastSoft's Allen, for instance. These models all pull in external data to generate responses. In a similar fashion, GPT-4 can extend its memory by leveraging tools like leg, which makes it challenging to claim that Titan's neural memory is unequivocally superior. Of course, setting it up for that purpose requires a different setup. Since it has its own memory module, it can continuously accumulate long-term memories. This is an advantage, but there are perspectives that consider alternative solutions. The third and final point to consider is whether Titan's remarkable capabilities will be effective in real-world applications. For instance, if Google adopts this for their services, we need to thoroughly examine its efficiency, performance, and potential energy savings. These aspects will require continuous observation, but from the perspective of implementing AI services. We should keep an eye on its strengths and advantages, but it's also worth considering that such news indicates the rise of innovative models that could potentially replace the existing ones. Imagine an application that can significantly reduce parameter counts while retaining long-term memory. For instance, if an AI service is based on our health data, where individual information accumulates over time, it would be catastrophic if it couldn't recall past information. On the other hand, if retaining that information enhances performance, then on-device AI could be implemented. Even if HBMA and such are not strictly necessary, applications that use memory could utilize models like Titan instead of Transformer. This leverages long-term memory for memory usage optimization. NVIDIA's GPUs, highly optimized for Transformer, are used extensively. An ASIC designed specifically for the Titan architecture could also be developed. By designing it independently, NVIDIA's dominance could be challenged, or NVIDIA might adapt by supporting the CUDA library or introducing a new GPU tailored for this, resulting in the creation of low-power, high-efficiency AI chips. This development could also pave the way for new AI startups. As I briefly mentioned earlier, why is there such a strong focus on building everything on AI servers for server use? The context window that the transformer has to process in parallel is so massive that it's extremely challenging to run it on a smartphone. However, the fact that it can be expanded to on-device processing is a significant advantage. As such models gradually emerge, it might create a market with a different dynamic compared to the existing AI infrastructure. It was such an imaginative paper that I decided to summarize it today. This has been Andal Engineering Error.